you're going to learn more than you thought you were going to learn from this lady. I just have to keep her in the back side of the kitchen and keep her away from where I'm getting my food so I can eat what I want. <laughs> she looks trim, Skip. She's trim. My name is Lisa, and I am one of the registered clinical dietitians here in Heart of Florida. Okay? So, it's funny I should follow the IV crew because believe it or not, I hope no one in this room had to be fed up by IV. <laughs> just not the, the bed. Some people think it's just uh, fluid that's next to their bed, but um, unfortunately some people do have to eat that way for a little while. Um, but what we do here at the Heart of Florida, um, often when I go into a patient's room, they will ask me what's for lunch today or what's for dinner today. And uh, honestly, I, um, sometimes I don't really know because, like I said, I'm a clinical dietitian. Not that I don't know, but we're, we're very um, involved with the patients. That is our role. We get consulted from the physicians or from nurses to go see a patient for some reason. There has to be a reason we go to see a patient. Okay, so they're a new diabetic or they're an existing diabetic and uh, they need, you know, just a little brush up or um, they're here for cardiac reasons and we have to pass along some cardiac diet information or they're not eating. Uh, so there's multiple, multiple reasons why a dietitian would be consulted to see a patient. Now just if everyone can kind of just show me a sign of hands and I mean, do you all go into hospitals and, and visit patients for the most part? Yeah. This is my team. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they better. Okay. Okay. So how this may relate to you, how I want to make this very, um, you know, very much so that you can use. Um, you know, we don't see every di or every, we only have two dietitians here, myself and another. So we don't see every single patient. That just wouldn't be possible, right? When it's there's 200 patients. But um, if you're he, you know, if you're in the hospital and you're seeing a patient, and I know one of the things that a lot of people like to do is um, they show their love through food for people. I mean, I know in my own family, you know, that's how it is. So, um, and I do, I do encourage it, but. I mean, it's very important that we know that the diet that the doctor has put the patient on um, be, for a couple reasons. Um, you know, it may go against their diet or, you know, uh, their diagnosis. Say they have congestive heart failure or something like that. And they're, we're really supposed to be monitoring their fluids and their salt, you know. So what I encourage you to do is um, you can always ask your nurse. But more importantly, you can... You know, you can ask to see the dietitian. Even if we are not on their case, per se, we, you know, we all have access to charts. And, you know, if someone were to ask us, we, we would be permitted and not be violating HIPAA, anything HIPAA, by looking in their chart, seeing what kind of diet that they're on, and making sure it's okay. <coughs> and, you know, the important part to that is sometimes we need to look at the whole picture, too. Um, the default <coughs> diet here in the hospital is cardiac. So you may not even have a cardiac condition, but... Sometimes the patient will just be put on a cardiac diet, meaning we're watching salt and we're watching fat. Um, so um, sometimes the patient is put on that and they're not hardly eating anyway. You know, as long as you get the stamp of approval from your dietitian or your nurse or, you know, if the doctor happens to be in there. Because sometimes doctors will write orders that say patient may have food brought from home because they're eating so poorly here. So, or in any hospital. So, you know, of course, I encourage that as a dietitian. I think, you know, the better a patient eats, the better they're going to heal and they're going to be able to go back home quicker. And, of course, that's our goal for every patient. Because, like we said before, what's their first question? When am I going home? So, you know, but also important because a lot of patients start out on clear liquid diets here. And there's reasons why the, the patient is on clear liquids. They may be going for some tests or, or whatnot. And, uh, you know, we don't want them... You know, we don't want to do anything that would, where a, te a patient wouldn't be able to go to a test because they had something to eat. So I think the physician would be really upset. <laughs> so, um, but the other thing you want to be careful of, not only is there a therapeutic part of the diet, meaning they might be on a diabetic diet or a cardiac diet, the other piece to that is they may be on a, uh, uh, consistency restriction and later you're going to have someone come in from therapy to talk about that. We work very 
closely with the speech therapist here. She is the she or he is the expert in chewing and swallowing, and uh, so you would never want to go against the that part of the diet as well because it could be very very harmful to the patient. They could aspirate, meaning they could choke, and it could go into their lungs and not their stomach. So it's always very important. You know, we encourage bringing treats to the patient and whatnot. You know, but just make sure you know it's okay and that you've checked with somebody and. Um, you know, they're not going for any tests that day and, and those kinds of things. But we do, we like to see our patients be eating well and, you know, it's always a good sign. It's always a good sign because sometimes when we initially see our patient, uh, you know, they're not eating much at all and they say, I've lost my appetite and I just don't feel well. So sometimes when we see them around the bend and they start to feel a little bit better and their appetite comes back, uh, we really do encourage them to eat the best that they can. So, um, but like I said, as a you know, as a clinical dietitian, uh, you know, we're on the units. We're you know, we work very closely with the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, the therapists, uh, reviewing lab work on the patient, and uh, uh, just everything that's going on with the patient. Looking at the whole picture, looking at the whole picture of the patient. And to answer this gentleman's question about the yogurt, <laughs> Greek yogurt, and some people just prefer it. It has a little more protein, has a, a little bit more protein than a, a non-Greek yogurt, I guess I should say. Um, and at times you'll find a little less sugar. It's a little, uh, it's, it's a little lower in sugar. And some folks just like it because it's, the texture is a little bit different too. It's a thicker texture. Um, would I say it's, you know, would, would I, if someone asked me, do I have to eat that instead of, you know, a yo play? I would say absolutely not. You know, it's your preference. It's your preference. But it is slightly lower in sugar, a little higher in protein, and uh, the texture is a little thicker that some people prefer. So, yes, ma'am. Does the Greek yogurt have the same life cultures as the Yes, it does, yes. And you always want to make sure you look on the packages, right. though, just to make sure they all do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so just like we were saying about if you're on antibiotics, because we do like to have that active uh, in there. The, the, ther the therapeutic dose is about, you know, three, at least three of the, um, at least the six ounce a day, because I know they make them, you know, some of them are a little small. Like does, yes? it matter, does it matter if it's got fruit or anything? No, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, no. We hear a lot about probiotics, Pro you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And then I know sometimes in a lot of food, how does that relate to antibiotics and it's, it's the same, it's the same, you know, food, we always recommend food first. So we'd rather, because the body knows that the best and you'll get the best absorption from food, okay? So as, you know, I know there are pills, there's probably some pills out there. I mean, I don't really frequent the GNCs because um, it's something, you know, we, we like to talk about food. But, yes, it works Amen. the same way. <laughs> it, works the, it works the same way if it's labeled with probiotics. It also helps replace the good floor in your colon. So that, that's the, the, um, the goal of those types of things, yeah. Yes, sir? I know we're not here to talk about pills, but since you brought that, there's... Um, Pros and cons on this. Pills like fish oil, vitamin E, vitamin C, B complex, you know, I hear that they're basically you're wasting the money that this computer system, do you think is, you know, I take fish oil and vitamin E and that, do you think it's any value? Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, if, you know what, if you are a person who do not eat foods that are high in those, in omega 3s and things like, you know, uh, you no know, fish. Say you know you just don't care for fish. It's okay. But again, food first, and it the, it is better absorbed, and the body utilizes it better as a food versus a pill. But again, if you don't eat those types of foods, you know you're not going to eat fish three times a week. Then I would say you know go ahead, you know go ahead, because at least then you are getting something. Yes, there is benefit to those those types. Yes, for your fish oils and and vitamin E and things like that, yes, absolutely. Does anyone have any questions about, you know, our roles here? And please, if you know, if you see one of us, uh, we'll say registered dietitian. And 
just to clarify too, um, a lot of people like to call us nutritionists, and I guess that's okay, but um, a nutritionist can be anyone who gets online and takes um, like a 20 question questionnaire, and then they get this little certificate that is uh, the prints out. So just be aware, even for yourself, say you want to go see somebody, um, a nutritionist doesn't have to be a, a registered dietitian. A registered dietitian is someone that has gone to school for, for four years and they have their degree in nutrition or food and nutrition. They do an internship for a year and they, just like a registered nurse, we take an exam, okay? And so we're credited by the American Dietetics Association. So just so you all know, even for your own personal, you don't want to go pay somebody $100 an hour and when they say they're nutritionists. Please always track credentials because that's very important, you know. Any, I, sometimes we think people that eat, they, you know, they, they can call themselves nutritionists, you know. So we just wouldn't want you to be misled at all. It would have to be a registered dietitian. Yes, ma'am? Do you personally or does your hospital <coughs> offer a program for non-patients for um, dietary um, issues? Um, we, you know, right now we only have some classes, some diabetic classes. We, we do once a month. Um, I do it the third, it's usually like the third Thursday of every month. Um, for three hours. Yeah, for three. Yeah, there, I, I'm not sure um, about what used to be here, but there used to be some outpatient counseling. Um, but again, it, it was usually doctors were, with patients who were new cardiac or diabetic, and the doctor, your doctor, of course, would have to write you a prescription. And then you would have to have your insurance, see if they would check for it. A lot of insurance are still not on board yet with preventive care and, you know. So we're hoping, you know, and sometimes a lot of people, if their insurance doesn't cover it, you know, they, they don't come to see a dietitian. So, but I'm hoping to see that change. I'm really hoping to see that change. There are dietitians who have their own companies. They have their own um, uh, consulting companies so but right now the only thing we do offer at the hospital is a, a, diabe a diabetic well you know we talk about healthy just healthy food in general too so um, which is good yeah. quick yes, question as far as like if you were um, we work with our, our local high school with our football team mm -hmm. and um, if you're pushing your body to the max as these boys do you know 99% of their meals before the game you know hours before <laughs> is going to be spaghetti or heavy starch. Uh -huh. Is that the best that they can do as far as, you know, there's like ziti or spaghetti noodles and bread and, mm -hmm. I mean, is there anything else that they could look at other than that? Yeah, well, um, I'm hoping there's some protein in there too. It's very important to have that blend of carbohydrates and protein, but those boys need a lot of energy and, of course, carbohydrates is the first right the first thing that our body uses for energy and what they're probably going to play what a three hour game or something like that so and and at that age group too boy i'm just jealous of those boys that are in that age group they can eat like four thousand calories a day four thousand <laughs> so but um yeah that's very good but i also hope they're, they're incorporating some protein too so but yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of a long standing that carbohydrates, you know, are good when you're going to do long, long activity like a run or maybe doing a marathon or something like that. So, and still water is the best hydrator. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yes, it is the best hydrator, but because of, um, be, they say if you're exercising within only 60 minutes, that water is the best. Now, if you start to go over that 60 minutes, you should start to replace the electrolytes, okay? So any of your, your drinks that are out there that replenish. Right. Your electrolytes are your sodium, your potassium, your calcium, things like that. Yeah. Yes. So if in that case, they may need some, especially in the hotter weather, yeah. Okay. So. All right. Well, it's a pleasure to be here today. I hope I, hope I taught you all something. And uh, again, if you yes. see a dietitian, um, please always feel free to ask us for a candy bar. <laughs>